So this morning we've heard a lot about digital, uh, where things are going in technology, um, but one of the key messages and key themes that I think are coming out is that people are really central to um, to any digital transformation. And that's what I'm here to talk about today, is the people side of the transformation. Um, but before we get into that, um, I wanted to run through with you quickly some of the mega trends that are kind of steering digital adoption and therefore steering digital transformation within organizations. And the first one, this is quite an old slide, but it's still quite a good one, is our ability to adopt technology, which is becoming much faster. So when uh, this tracking started, it was taking about, there was one cycle, massive wave of technology advancement, roughly every 20 years, until about 1980. And then it started becoming every 10 years, until about the year 2000. And then it started becoming every five years. And now we're looking at a new wave of technology and our ability to adopt that um, as a majority of consumers becoming every two years. So what that means is that the technology that's used to power these advancements are being thrown away and new technology is coming in. And it's really a struggle to keep up with that as, as businesses. The second um, mega trend is the, our ability to be asset light and on demand. And I think Joshua touched on this this morning with the subscription um, economy driving a lot of this. And I, I really love this, this visual. So this was Airbnb when they started off. Um, these were the properties that were available to rent uh, in Paris. And then four years later, somebody, uh, data uh, analytics firm, took this visual and said, and this was four years later, the, the, the available properties to rent. Um, and that's just becoming exponentially um, more, more greater and faster. In, in the music streaming industry, um, almost 50% of music revenues now are from streaming rather than from owning a CD. So our, our ability to adopt not just technology but also on-demand services um, is becoming greater and greater. The human machine, so we've heard about the Internet of Things a lot today, uh, we've heard about AI and analytics, um, and so that's another wave, another mega trend that's really driving our, um, our, uh, our, our kind of technological advancement and also um, our digital adoption. Does anyone know what this is? Does anyone know what this is? So this was a Facebook experiment that was conducted last year. And they set up two um, AI bots, Bob and Alice, um, and asked them to trade a ball for some other stuff, paper clips, money. Um, and what happened was Bob and Alice started trading in their own language. So they had to shut down the experiment because none of the clever programmers at Facebook actually knew what Bob and Alice were talking about. And this was, a, this was an excerpt from that, so make of that what you will. Um, but that leads on to the fourth mega trend, which is our ability to just send information, data, photos, the written word, all over the, all over the globe. Um, and that's become much, much uh, greater over the last 10 years. And I think Mark touched on this earlier. So what this visual is, this is the papal inauguration of uh, the two papal inaugurations, uh, the first one in 2005, and then the second one in 2013, and that's sort of driving our the selfie kind of generation that uh, that Mark was discussing earlier. And what that means is that as we become more quantified as humans, as we share more information and more data, we are becoming digital. In, in all the footprints that we leave across all of the websites and all of the wearables that we have. Um, and this is all of the information that, that we're sharing. And this is in uh, zettabytes. Anyone know what a zettabyte is? I'm sure some of you do. Um, so in very simple terms, a zettabyte, one zettabyte is about a trillion 
gigabytes. So if it's something like if everybody had about 12 phones on the planet and they were sharing the hell out of all of those phones, that would be the amount of information that we're currently sharing every year. And this is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Interestingly, um, only a third is structured data. So it means that actually the technology, the analytics that we're using is now being built to deal with data that isn't structured and turning that into hopefully more structured data. So we're becoming digital as human beings. And all of this powers transformations in our organisations. And when we strip back really what it is that we need to power digital transformation. It's, it's none of those things. It, all, it does all power it, but actually we don't really use any of those things. What we use is time, we use money, and we use people. And these are all limited, limited resources, as anybody knows that has done a digital transformation. The only things that are really unlimited is our motivation to do it, how we communicate what we're doing with each other and how we respond to that, and the amount of energy that we've got to be able to, to do that. And so the first lesson really that I have learned in, in the digital transformations that I have done is to use your unlimited resources as much as you can. Every transformation starts off in debt, whether that's a debt because you've got old processes or has anyone done a transformation or a project where you've started off and you've got like supplies and you think you're going to have a great, great, you know, bit of tech coming in, but then there's an old system over here that doesn't quite connect to anything or that doesn't quite, you know, can't kind of API into the new tech that you want. And so you end up working around it, or you end up building something around it. That's technology debt. But we never really acknowledge that when we start a transformation. So we have our critical path, and we have everything that looks lovely and green, but we never have a debtor's sheet that says, this is the debt that we're going to pay back over this transformation. We don't really do that in many of our transformations. And so if I'd leave you with one thing, actually, it would be you start off in debt when you transform your organisation, always. So use as much of your limited resources, your unlimited resources, as you can to offset that debt from the start and then work through the debt that you can't offset with your limited resources. So we start off with our digital transformation and we've got the boss man who says, okay, I get it, I get it, we've got to be digital. But these are the things, this is the model that we have, this is our business model, and usually most business models are some form of market model where we build a product or a service and then we try to get that service to as many people as possible and then we have some back office functions that then um, help customers, if it's a customer-driven service, to be able to... Um, to be able to kind of uh, deal with stuff after they've got the product, right? So that's the kind of market model that, uh, that, that, we, that, that, that we run to. And so that means sales and that means cost in, in the eyes of the boss man. But then we come along and we say, well, we're going to digitise all of this. Okay, but these are our KPIs that we have to use in order to kind of make that successful. And we usually want kind of quick results as well because we're, we're investing a lot up front. So we go to our teams and we say, this is what we're doing and we're going to engage you in the how we're going to be doing this. And this is usually the response that, that I normally get anyway. So how do, we, how do we take that market business model and how do we kind of configure that in some way for our teams. Well, there is another business model that's been emerging with a lot of the digital 
um, organisations, which is more of a social business model. So that is that that the organisations will build content, they'll gather followers, they'll gather fans, then they become a brand, and then they start to put product on top of that brand. But they've built their business from the right-hand side versus traditional businesses which build from the left-hand side. Now, I don't know which side your businesses run to, but the only way that you will make a, digital, a digitally enabled business is if you somehow try to merge the two. So pick off the components that you think will work for you as your business and make sure that both of them are in there and that they're understood by all parties. Fuse your market and social business model. <clears throat> I like this, uh, this model. This was originated by a behavioralist called Dan Pink who looked at intrinsic uh, motivators in the workplace and then it's sort of be, become really the digital model for kind of how, how the digital employee would behave in the workplace and it works on the, on, the, on the view that an employee's got to have purpose, they've got to have autonomy in their role and they've got to be able to progress in their role, they've got to be able to master skills and knowledge and see how that, that's doing and that's what creates the trust between the employee and the loyalty, therefore, between the employee and the organisation. So, one of the ways that we look at purpose is through objectives. Um, and I'm sure most of your organisations have got, you know, objective setting kind of framework. And um, this is how a sort of traditional framework would look. So, the company would... Uh, would kind of direct the objectives and they would become smaller and smaller and then you might empower some of your employees to have their own objectives within, within that framework and then the contribution would then work its way back up the chain and you'd have some results at the end of it. What was interesting when I worked at Spotify was um, that they and a lot of other digital companies had a slightly different model which was that there were company objectives and there were group objectives and there were personal objectives, but actually they all had equal parity. So they should all interlink, but there wasn't one direction and one flow. And when I started at Spotify, I had, um, I had a group of customer service advisors. I use that term loosely because what they were were baby engineers who hadn't quite made the cut to becoming true sort of Spotify rock star engineers yet. And on my first couple of days, we were talking about how do we sort of, how do we kind of scale this thing? How do we make it all, you know, lovely and digital? And I looked at the amount of queries that there were, and there were this batch of queries that were like 18 months old. And I said, how, how are these 18 months old? What's happened here? Um, how have you not responded to these customers in 18 months? And they said to me, Maria, we haven't solved the problem yet. So I'm thinking, okay. The point was that these baby engineers had, their purpose was to try and solve the problem. Their purpose wasn't, in their minds, to keep the customer updated. So when we look at purpose, and we look at using that OKR system, Actually, they can go away and they can solve some of those problems. And that's what we did. We, we used the OKR system to be able to do that. So it's vital when you do a digital transformation to connect your employee purpose to your transformational one. And it shouldn't necessarily be in the ups-down stage. Bless you. Coming on to autonomy. Um, we did... Uh, um, I did a piece of work with a, a retailer a couple of years ago on digital transformation. And there was this real misalignment between the empowerment and the autonomy that they wanted to give their staff, but the way that they sort of managed their staff in their HR practices and framework. So we tried to kind of bring this to life a bit. So we went away and we looked at their expenses policy. Now, all of you, you have an expenses policy in your organisations? Some kind of travel expenses policy, yeah? 
You all know the spirit of that policy, you all kind of adhere to it, yeah? Any of you know the letter of your policies, the absolute word for word? No. So at Spotify, our expenses policy was eight words, act in the best interests of Spotify. When we did the retailer analysis, it was 206 words. So we thought, we're not going to stop there. So we took then a public sector body. And that was 5,216 words. And then we took a Whitehall department, over 13,000 words, to write, act in the best interests of your organisation. And so what we did was we tried to show digital transformation is not just about the tech, it's not just about empowering people to serve other people, it's actually about the marginal stuff that exists day to day. And you can't truly have a digitally enabled organisation and an autonomous team if you've got an expenses policy that's 13,000 words. So design your transformation for an autonomous team. Think about what life would be like if there were no managers or no supervisors. How would your people do their jobs? And then finally, in the trifecta, we have the betterment. So how do we progress as people, as, as employees? And I'm going to sort of make an admission now. I'm a closet gamer, so I game quite a lot. But I wanted to share these two examples with you of, of gaming because um, our ability to solve problems is in a way linked very much to our ability to kind of play and experiment and play games. And the first one, Dumb Ways to Die, this was the Australian Metro. And what they did was they, um, they built this little game for people to play and the more you played it, the better you got at it. Um, but there were some key underlying messages throughout this game. And they put it into schools and it, it went viral and, um, you know, and then it kind of it ended up, I think, in the top five of the app store. So it was very, very popular. But what it also did was it, it reduced the deaths on the Australian Metro by 21% in one year. Because people were playing this game and kind of getting these messages and understanding, oh, I get better at this, I've got better knowledge, I, I, get, I, I get what I need to do to be safe. Uh, the Play to Cure, the genes in space, this is a, a cancer, cure for cancer. Um, so they set up a big hackathon and some really bright guys came up with the idea of playing a game. And what it does is you navigate, you play the game, you navigate your way through space and through kind of meteorites and bollards and all things like that. But what you're actually doing is they're pouring data in of, of the DNA of people that have tumours and cancers, different types of tumours and cancers. And as you are navigating your way through space, you are providing scientists with the pathways of anomalies, peaks, troughs, so that they can suddenly, they can see, they don't have to trawl through lots and lots of data, they can just focus on the hotspots that all the gamers are providing for them. And we don't have to just be a gamer to understand the idea of progress and the idea of kind of mastery and betterment. This was the contact centre at Spotify, so this is what it looked like, sofas, all kind of funky stuff that you would expect. Um, but what we had in the middle here was we had a wall of pain for customers, and we used to have a hackathon um, every week, and we used to give the employees in the contact centre two hours, uh, uh, we'd give a group of them, we'd pick a problem that had been put up, posted up all week, and we'd say, right, you've got two hours these are the tools at your disposal. Go solve the problem. Go and see what we can do to solve that problem. That is part of digital transformation. Enabling people to progress their knowledge, enabling people to solve problems on your behalf. So when you're thinking about your digital transformation, think about being the platform for it rather than your project team or however you're set up being the solution for it. Your people will, will, will find the solutions. You just need to be the platform to enable that to happen. So when you start to get the framework in place and you start to 
think about um, how you get your purpose and your autonomy and progress of people and how, how you can show that, it's time to start getting people on board. And until you get the right people on board with your digital transformation mission, you are the lone nut. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'll let, I'll let this guy tell you. I learned a lot about leadership and making a movement. Then let's watch a movement happen, start to finish in under three minutes, and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore. It's about the them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd, and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers, because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point, and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in-crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over-glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. So, who are the lone nuts? Who are the first followers in your organization that you can tap into? Is it your CFO? Is it your biggest cynic? Who are those people? Don't be a lone nut. Get your first followers as part of your digital transformation. Everyone know what this says? One of the biggest um, obstacles that I often come across in digital transformations is manual workarounds. So we transform something and then the project gets underway and other stuff takes priority or we have what's a scope creep, which I absolutely bore as a, as a, as a term. Um, and so we end up with a solution that doesn't quite mean what we had envisaged and our people being able to have to read and have to do jumbled up stuff every single day as part of their jobs. Salesforce um, commissioned um, a survey on contact centres a couple of years ago. And in it they said that the average contact centre agent has to use seven systems. They have to toggle two screens usually between seven systems to answer one customer. That's not being digital. So just because you can work around something doesn't mean that you should. There's a vast difference between having a, a minimum viable product that really works and really takes off that you can build on and having stuff that you work around. So be really honest with yourselves and with your transformation teams about what each one looks like. And if it's a workaround, put it into your debt. Put it into your debt and work through it until the debt is, is cleared. 
So as we start to kind of build up our frameworks and we start to engage better with our employees and we start to think about the, what the business model is and how we're fusing that with the social model, we want to start getting stuff done. We want to start getting stuff done quickly. And so we'd always recommend prototyping as part of your transformational um, as part of your transformational project, show and tell what you're doing. And how we would normally do that would be, we'd set a number of hypotheses. So that might be user stories, it might be a little bit higher than that, what you're trying to prove or disprove. We'd probably try and focus on just five or 10% of what you think the full solution would be. We'd make it repeatable. Is it, does it work? Is it, can it be repeated elsewhere? Um, and we'd use the kind of law of three to be able to do that and then socialise the results. And if you're the platform for digital transformation rather than the ones trying to drive the solution, actually your people will be able to do a lot of that for you. You will have many, many talents within your organisation and within your teams that you may not even be aware of. So use your digital trifecta, your, your, your bar of progression to think, do I have artists that can mop me up stuff? Do I have aspiring developers that can help me create things? You're just trying to prove that a hypothesis works as part of a full solution rather than waiting until the full solution is in place. This one's really, really important. We, I said at the beginning, a lot of our digital transformations all start off in green because that's really comfortable for us. But if we're in green all the time, then it becomes an exercise in just staying in green. And that sometimes can become the objective. And that's a lot of the time where I get called in where, you know, the model looks like it's in green and all the, all the project mapping is in green. But actually, we all know deep down we're not in green. We're in amber or we're in red. And it's okay to be in amber. So maybe start off in red or start off in amber and only go to green if you really, really have to. And if you do feel that your transformation is in, is in full control, then something's wrong. You should not be feeling that comfortable. So think about what elements are you feel really fully in control of. Maybe dissect them a little bit more. What are the things that we could push ourselves on? This is quite an interesting um, couple of slides from the Institute of Project Management, where actually project success and... and um, I think it was Joshua who mentioned this as well, uh, is the success is actually in decline. So we're, we're kind of our, our digital transformations are not as successful as we may think that they are. And the key reason for that from this study was change. Change in the project objectives or change in the organisational objectives. And so the last lesson that I would leave with you is this one. Whatever you build, build it to throw it away. You know, if we go back to the mega trends that we, that we saw at the very beginning, technology, digital adoption is moving so quickly. You know, yes, partner up with someone for five years, but don't buy a system for five years. Prepare to throw it away. and we're going to need more transformation all the time. We prepare your business to be in constant transformation. So in summary, pay your debts. Don't forget about your market and your social models. Connect your goals and your employees' goals and give them the space to develop their own goals. Design for the autonomous employee will really, really make a difference. Be the platform, don't be the solutioneer. Don't work around something just because you can. And who are you going to get? Who's going to be your first follower? Me, it's always the CFO, you know, but that's just my, my opinion. If you feel in control, move quicker, move faster. Continuously prototype, 5%, 10%, make it repeatable, socialise it. 
and then the stuff that you're really proud of, your, your digital baby, you're prepared to throw it away. So thank you very much.